Hi there guys, this is Chris Coney speaking and welcome back. So Binance has 7,000 BTC stolen from their hot wallet. I'm not sure if calling this a hack is appropriate or even correct, which is why I've gone with a factual episode title for today. What upsets me though, what upsets me is this kind of thing. Where you see like, beware Binance hacked, fucking red alarm, shock face. Uh, what else we got? Binance got hacked, millions in Bitcoin, gone. Well, it hasn't gone, so that's not factual. Um, live Binance hacked, our fun safe blah, blah, blah. The problem is that people respond to that kind of thing, right? Which creates an incentive for content creators to do it. So I don't really blame the creators. Now, while that feels inauthentic for me to do that kind of thing, I'll admit that sometimes I do it because I feel I have to. So please make a stand for my approach to crypto content creation by going to thecryptoverse.show, click on support the show button and pledge some support as a patron if you would be so kind. Anyway, in the official announcement from Binance, they say, quote, hackers were able to obtain a large number of user API keys, two-factor authentication codes, and potentially other info. The hackers used a variety of techniques, including phishing, viruses, and other attacks. We are still conducting all possible methods used, or concluding all possible methods used. There may also be additionally affected accounts that have not been identified yet. Close quote. We won't know the full story until they complete the security audit. However, right now, this sounds to me like another case of individual users having their access credentials stolen rather than a security issue with the Binance system itself, right? Rather than the security of the Binance system being broken. For example, if I have poor security practices on my laptop and a hacker is able to get hold of my Binance login credentials, well, they can simply walk right through the front door, take my money and walk right out again, right? To the Binance computer system, that looks like a perfectly legitimate action because it passes all the authentication checks that they have in place, like two-factor authentication, email and whatever else, right? So in that scenario, it's not a failure of Binance's system, but of the individual user. Again, I'll stress that we need the results of the full security audit before coming to any hard conclusions, but if I'm right about this being the result of poor user security, then Binance isn't to blame for this. Yes, yes, they they do have security systems in place that like monitor the exchange for suspicious activity, and they have intercepted potential thefts in the past that were the result of poor user security. Um, but the question is, how far... Do we expect Binance to extend their sense of responsibility, right? It has to end somewhere, otherwise their liability is unlimited. And that's just untenable, isn't it? So 7,000 BTC was removed from their hot wallet, worth around, what, $40 million? And they say here that they only keep about 2% of their BTC in the hot wallet anyway. Uh, they've disabled deposits and withdrawals on the Binance platform. And they say that might stay there for about a week because that's how long it's going to take them to complete their detailed security audit. Now, if you're wondering uh, if you're going to lose any money, the answer is no, because Binance have their own insurance fund that they set aside to cover things like this. The good news there is that that should keep regulators off their back since no users are going to lose money, right? So Binance are going to pay for this out of their own pocket. That relates to my issue, though, of, you know, uh, they are, in my, to my mind, like, if if I'm right about this being a poor user security, well, Binance are going way above and beyond the call of duty here, right? When essentially users are responsible for their own security. But I'm still assuming that it is a user end security breach and not a Binance end security breach. You know, I've been talking a lot about the Black Swan book recently because I've just finished reading it for the second time. This insurance fund that I've mentioned um it says here, Binance will use the hashtag Seifu fund to cover the incident in full. Back in the middle of last year, 2018, um, after Binance thwarted a theft, and it was it was a theft, it was one of these poor user security, hackers logged in and tried and removed the funds, but 
they didn't actually end up getting out with any funds last time. And as a result of that, Binance started putting away money. So 10% of all the trading fees that they collected were going into their own little insurance fund just in case they needed to reimburse users for any losses. Like, so that's the, the wisdom there. And this is why I'm such a big fan of Binance is that even though their, secure, their, their security systems are solid, like I said in my recent, uh, you know, why the Japanese love Bitcoin and Americans will soon join them episode, the Black Swan book, you know, um, the, the impact of the highly improbable, a Black Swan is something we can't predict. So if we can't predict, then what's the advice? Well, the author, Nassim Talib, he says the only thing you can do is prepare. And that is exactly what Binance did. They knew that even though they probably had full confidence in their security practices and all that, and had a perfect track record, they still set aside funds to um, in case there was something that they hadn't thought of, like a Black Swan event, right? So that's just like, they're going way above and beyond the Call of Duty here. Anyway, let's get back to it here. So if you're wondering if you're going to lose any money, the answer is no, because Binance have already thought of this. Um, they didn't know where the threat or the attack was going to come from, but they had money set aside just in case something happened that they couldn't conceive of. Now, Cheng Pang Zhao, CZ, the CEO of Binance, said uh, that in response to the hack, the community suggested rolling back the Bitcoin blockchain. Something that CZ said in his like Periscope live stream. He said, I didn't even know we could do that. Well, that's because you can't do that without completely destroying confidence in Bitcoin. Right? Plus, you would have to have a cabal of miners with enough, enough hashing power to effectively 51% attack the network and reverse all transactions that happened after the transaction where the hacker removed funds from Binance, right? So that would, um, if they did, that would cause a level of chaos that I think could potentially kill Bitcoin. So that simply can't happen. I'm with Matty Greenspan on this one. I don't even see how CZ even took that suggestion seriously. Confidence in the Bitcoin blockchain comes from this absolute immutability. And if that's violated, I'd consider that an attack on the network and an attempt to defraud users. Because if you if you roll back all transactions um, up to the point where the hacker removed the funds from Binance, you basically cancel all the transactions that legitimate users did after that, right? If we start bailing out private companies in the crypto space at the expense of innocent users in that way, then we are right back in the fiat economy that we came to crypto to get away from. So in terms of market reactions, so I've got the charts here. Around around the same time that the Binance announcement went live on their uh, support section, like Bitcoin, Bitcoin dropped like what? I'd say 2.4%, but from the from the midnight candle GMT, it actually dropped more like 4% in a couple of hours. And the BNB token, the Binance token, that dropped from midnight, it went down about 10 and a half percent over two hours. Well, that, that, you know, while that happened around the same time by the clock, that's not hard proof that one thing caused the other. I'm just making the observation that those things happened at the same time by the clock. In any case, the Binance coin is already back up like seven odd percent from that low of $19.50. And Bitcoin's also somewhat recovered from that dip over the two hours. It's up like 2.8% from a low that it, it hit on Coinbase. 56.56 was the lowest it got. And now it's back up at 58.28. So I would say that the ultimate solution to the problems like this, this security issue, would be things like decentralized exchanges, right? If you go to Binance.org, you can play around with the DEX, the decentralized exchange that Binance has launched recently and continues to develop. And as long as you interact with the Binance DEX from a ledger wallet, which you can do, uh, if you click on start trading, you can just look at the trading interface without even having an account or anything. But if you click on unlock wallet, it'll give you this screen. Then it'll give you a whole bunch of different ways of interacting with the Binance DEX, one of which is ledger device. So this means you can trade on Binance directly from your ledger hardware wallet. And if you do that, there is absolutely no risk of this kind of theft happening, even if you have terrible security on your local computer, even if you have viruses and Trojan horses and it's riddled with security issues. 
your backstop, your failsafe, is that your Ledger device has a little screen on it and you have to press a physical button in order to authenticate that transaction. As long as you, you know, um, as long as you don't accept fraudulent transactions or ones you don't recognize, you're absolutely safe. So this is the way forward at the end of the day. In any case, stay tuned to the Cryptoverse and I will bring you more details on this as they are revealed. Let me know what you think in the comments below if you're watching this on YouTube or on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Chris Coney INT. That stands for Chris Coney International. So let's get a discussion going, ask me questions, make comments, and uh, we'll see where it goes. But that's all I've got for you today. Please go ahead and hit that like button if you're a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button and everyone click the bell if you would be so kind. Also, please support the show by going to thecryptoverse.show. You can either click on support the show if you want to become a patron, get rid of the ads on both the podcast and the video version, get access to the private chat group where we've been having some great discussions lately. And yesterday I actually posted a, a great trade call where I said, um, I said, set, I was like, well, I didn't say, I didn't tell anyone what to do, but I said, right, I'm selling, I'm selling BTC at 5,900. And then it proceeded to dump quite hard right after that. So <laughs> that was a pretty good call. So you get access to the private chat. Uh, you get rid of the ads on both the podcast and the video. You also get cryptocurrency rewards for being a loyal supporter. So you actually get some of the money that you pledge back in cryptocurrency accumulation. Alternatively, you can click on the green button, online courses, and you can go over to my online school, Cryptoversity, the online school for principled crypto investors, where you can invest in the world's number one asset. That's your own education. You can get started for free by clicking on either one of the buttons right where it says get started for free. But other than that, I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.